Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here with another Luminar tutorial. Uh, Luminar 4.3 was released this week, and it's got a couple of really cool new features that I think you're going to find useful in your workflow. In this short video, I'm going to let you know what's been added to the program uh, and how to use the new features. The first thing I'm going to show you is the new visual experience that you get with a looks panel. And so the easiest way is just to demo that. So if I'm in the regular library mode, uh, I can either hit edit, uh, or I can, if I'm in the G for grid, I can simply double click on an image uh, that brings up the edit panel. So what they've done is they've simply made it so that if you mouse over one of the looks, you can now see the effect that that has on the photo. And so if you find something you like, uh, you can then select it and then you can dial it up or down as desired. Uh, and then if you want to try something else, if you just want to preview some preview another look, you simply go back and forth. Uh, in, in the older versions, you had to actually click the look uh, before you were able to see the effect on the picture. So this is a really nice uh, new visual experience that you have, and it's going to make editing photos a lot easier and a lot more uh, just visually appealing uh, when you're working with images and trying to apply different looks. Uh, and of course, you always have uh, the the undo button, the history button down here, where you can go back uh, to any step in the workflow that you've applied. So, okay, let's go back to the library panel. Uh, and so I have all of my folders here. I'll hit G for grid to bring up all of the photos. Uh, the next thing that they've added, and this is probably the biggest addition that we've seen from Luminar yet, is this new search tool up here in the top bar. And we've been asking for search capabilities from Luminar for quite a while, uh, pretty much since the first version, and every time they release a new addition to the program, a new update. Uh, and they're always like, well, not at this time, but we always know they're working on it. We know what that, what that means. Uh, and that's the way they approach it. They Instead of giving everything at once, Luminar has, has built a foundation, and then they'll add a set of features on top of that, and they'll keep adding. Instead of throwing everything out there on the table at once, and then having problems and trying to diagnose and say, oh God, what, what might have caused those coding errors? Uh, so at any rate, we now have a search function. It's a basic search function. It's their first go at it. And it's not nearly as full featured as you would see in Lightroom, uh, but it does work. And it allows you to search for images, uh, folders, uh, folder names, uh, date of capture, or any kind of extension. <clears throat> and so to show you how it works, we're just going to check here. We'll type winter and see what comes up. And these are all of the folders uh, that have the winter that, that are labeled as winter. You know, all the folders uh, over here that are labeled winter. So uh, here I've got Anchorage, Alaska folders, winter. Uh, we can look at, let's, oh yeah, here's my 2018 Scotland trip. Uh, that I took in the winter time. If we want to find all of our raw images, I'm going to search for all my, oh, there's my folder of XRAW Studio images, but I'm going to search by extension and all files with RAF in the name. So these are all my Fuji RAW files. Yes, I do shoot RAW on occasion. And so these are all of my Fuji RAW files. Or all of the RAW files that are stored. Some of these are older, so... Uh, but at any rate, we can uh, we can choose any one of these, and let's go down and so there are six thousand four hundred eighty-five photos, and they're loading pretty fast. Uh, but let's choose this guy here. Oh, hiking uh, hiking along a mountain ridge above a Klutna lake in a snowstorm, and so let's go ahead and edit that. Uh, let's see what we got. We can mouse over and see the effect of these different looks. And nothing's jumping out of me yet. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Let's choose that, dial it down a little bit. I always find that like 30 to 50% is kind of the magic, kind of the magic number, uh, the magic amount for when these looks uh, kind of have the most impact without going overboard. Sometimes the full, sometimes the full 100% looks pretty cool, but oftentimes I find that 30 to 50% uh, gives me a good balance. 
So anyway, we'll call that good. So again, back to the search function. Uh, we got sidetracked there. Uh, let's type biking. So here's uh, one folder of biking on, on this drive uh, in my Luminar catalog. Let's see. I'll type Chugach. I've got Chugach landscapes, Chugach aerials, uh, three different folders. So we could uh, we could look for photos that were shot in February. All photos made February 2018, 2017 here. And it'll bring those right up. So yeah, it's not quite as full featured yet. You can only search by image, folder name, uh, date or extension. You can't search by caption or keyword yet. Uh, you can't search by any other metadata, but hopefully that's coming. But at the very least, it's a start and it'll help you uh, more quickly be able to find images that you have stored in your Luminar catalog. Let's try an image search. Uh, I'm gonna look specifically for an image that's Feb, dot, uh, Feb 20 dash 01103 and, and there we go. And there's quite a few of them here, as you can see. So this is actually a raw file and I had done a bunch of different conversions and saved each one back to the main folder. And I can even edit those more so I could I could do a raw conversion and, and come up with a totally different look and then do an edit on that look. So I actually like that a lot, that's pretty cool. So that, that's one of the reasons I love Luminar so much is it's fast, easy creativity. Uh, and, it, and it's very inspiring because you can see exactly what you're doing and especially now that you have these looks that will show you uh, right in the main window instead of having to click on it and wait for that to load. I'm gonna show you one more feature that was added. Uh, this was more of a performance tweak. The crop tool has been uh, improved dramatically. And so uh, if we click the crop tool up here and then we can you know, adjust our image and then hit done, it's way faster than it used to be. Uh, and I'm running Luminar 4.3 on my 10 year old Mac Pro uh, and it, it runs pretty well. The crop tool was one of those things that tended to hang up a little bit more than you'd like, uh, but they've addressed that now and they fixed that, and they've actually fixed a bunch of different performance issues. And so overall, Luminar 4.3 is gonna run faster and snappier than the previous versions. And finally, with Luminar's 4.3 update, the program now supports a lot of the newer cameras out there, uh, like the Fujifilm X-T4, the X-100V, the X-T200, the Nikon D780, Z50, and the new EOS 1DX Mark III, a Sony A92, and a bunch of other cameras from Olympus and Panasonic. Uh, so there's so if you shoot a newer camera, you'll definitely want to update your Luminar. If you are a Luminar 4 user, then it's a free update. You can update right in the software. If you don't use Luminar 4, you can check out this link, and that'll take you right to my blog where you can get a discount code and save $10 if you want to try the program out. Uh, I find it to be a really fun, easy to use, uh, inspires creativity very easily and and that's actually the credo that the developers follow when they design Luminar is, is they want to make a program that allows you to edit photos get great looking images with a minimal amount of time so thanks for watching this video I hope you found it helpful I've got a few other Luminar tutorials on my channel uh, be sure and subscribe leave a comment you can find me on patreon and social media at Dan Bailey photo and you can visit my website so thanks again for watching uh, have fun with your camera out there, and we'll see you next time.